So one of the first things I wanted to do on Linux after having some transparency on my terminals was to show my distribution logo and my system info on my terminal. And today we're going to look at how to do that with NeoFetch and just some of the crazy amounts of things you can actually customize with this application. So if you're new around here, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year and your support will really help the channel out. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you're using one of the more, I guess, user-friendly distros, you probably already have this set up. So if you open up your terminal and you see this logo here, then you've already got NeoFetch actually in your Bash RC. So if you've done that, then I guess you can just skip ahead to where I actually look at some of the stuff you can configure with it. But if you don't, we're gonna start from there, I guess. So if you don't have NeoFetch installed, it is a really popular application. So it's probably in your distro standard repos. On Arch, you can go sudo, pacman-s neofetch and you can just install it like that or if you're on Ubuntu or IQ or anything like that then you can install it like that. It is available on 150 distros, even things that just aren't that popular like Haiku and a couple of other things. You can look at a list of the available distros on the GitHub for NeoFetch, I believe. So if it's not available there, then you can request it and they'll probably put it in at some point in the near future. So to actually have it displayed on my terminal like this every time I open it, because as you can see, when, every time I open a terminal, it just auto, uh, automatically actually runs that command. So the way we do this is we go into my bash RC or into your Z shell RC, your fish configuration, whatever your configuration file is for your terminal. And basically you just run it as the first line of your configuration file. And then every time that you open up your terminal, it'll then just run the application. So that's fairly simple. So yeah, if you're already seeing that when you open up your terminal, then it's probably already in your RC file for whatever your shell is. So, you can actually configure a lot of different stuff for this. So if we just bring up another terminal so we can see all the stuff here. So right now I'm showing this information, my OS, host, kernel, uptime, packages, shell, resolution, window manager, terminal, terminal font, CPU, both of my GPUs and my memory. But you don't have to display all of that or you can display some of it and there's also extra things you can display. So if we go into my .config file or config folder, I guess, and go into the NeoFetch folder, and then we open up, what's it called? Config.conf, I guess. So open up that. So there's a bunch of different stuff you can display in here. So if we don't want to display, say the title, for example, so the title is this thing up here, we can just comment that out. So I've got things like my desktop environment commented out because I'm not running a desktop environment. I guess we should probably move that. So you can comment any of this stuff out if you don't want to see it. So if you don't want to see the OS, for example, you can just comment that out or because I'm not running a desktop environment, I've got that commented out. I think it defaults to, I don't know, what does it do if I have no desktop environment? I am not even sure. Let's open up a new terminal and okay, it just says nothing, cool. So it must be just loading in a environment variable or something like that. But you can also say display your desktop environment theme or your icons. Once again, I'm not using a desktop environment, so I think it defaults to like my GTK theme or something, which I don't really care about showing because I've got like one GTK app installed. So you can reorder these as well. So if you want to say have your say GPU and your CPU right at the top, you can just move those lines up to the top and then it will display them there. So I can just show you that now. So if we do that and then we open up a new terminal, we can see now that all of that stuff is now at the top. And if we just put that back there, then we save it again, close that off, and now it's back to where it was. So there's other things in here, like you can show your CPU usage, your disk usage, that's your hard drive usage, your battery if you're using a laptop, your system font. I'm not sure what font that is actually pulling from, so I can't really modify that because I don't actually know where it's coming from. I think it might be the same as your desktop environment theme. I think it might be coming from there or something like that. I'm not sure though. So if you've got a music player, you can also display that. You can display your local IP. So that's your IP on your current network and your public IP, the IP address you display to the world. I believe that shows in IPv6 as well. Users, I'm actually not sure what that one does. Oh, it just says the user that's logged in. And your locale is I think that is the language that your system is in. If you are using Arch, you probably set up your locale when you were configuring your system. I think mine's like EN 
AU or something like that. So before we go on to the, I'm not gonna go through all of this because I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a 760 lines of config. So we're not gonna go through all of that. So before we go on to that, I'm gonna show you something in the wiki. So we can go into customizing info in here. And so this goes over how to customize everything if what I go through in the video isn't clear. So this will show you how to actually customize stuff. But the thing I wanted to show you in here was that you can actually define, where is it? You can define custom things to print. So say like you want to print your weather, for example, we can chuck this in here. I wouldn't rec, okay. The reason I wouldn't recommend putting stuff like this into your near fetch is because of this. It will, instantly slow it down really, really far if you start chucking stuff into your NeoFetch. So be very careful what sort of commands you do put in here. If you want to put slower commands, then you have to be aware that it will make your terminal start up slower. So I tend to just stick to the really simple text stuff. But if you do want it to load quicker, there is actually a way to deal with that. So if you come right down to the bottom here, you actually can run each of these asynchronously by just sticking the ampersand sign on the end. So that'll then make everything run in the background. The only issue with this is that you can't guarantee the order stuff will be in. So if you're really worried about the order, then you're gonna have to wait for it to actually run. But if you don't care and you just want it to run as quick as possible, then go ahead and do this. I care about the order and I'm not running anything that takes a long time because I'm just querying text files basically. So if that is an issue for you, then go ahead and do that. And if you don't really care about the order, then also yeah, just go ahead and do it, you'll get a bit of a speed boost. So when you do the custom printouts, you can also actually change the color of stuff. So if we copy this in here, so this is going to print out color four, that's not my name, I guess, whatever that that is gonna do. So yeah, it'll print the text out in blue. So if you wanna do fancy stuff on here, then you can do that and it's perfectly fine. So the other thing that I wanted to show, actually, no, I think we're going on to the yeah, config file for this one. So you don't actually have to show an ASCII image in here. You can actually show a proper image if you have a terminal that supports different image previewing modes. The only one that I've got installed right now is W3M and it doesn't work properly in ST. So I can't really show that off properly, but I'll show you what you can do in the config file. So. As I said before, I'm not going to go through everything in here because there is 760 lines of configs, but I'll go through some of it and I guess some of the cool stuff. So above every single setting, it shows you what it'll actually do. So you're not completely just blind about what it's going to do. So say for example, the kernel shorthand, if you want to make sure it says Linux there, then you can switch this to off. And instead of just saying the version, it'll say, uh, where is that? It'll say Linux, whatever the version number is. But if we set that back to on, then we do that. And now it doesn't say Linux there anymore. So there's just a bunch of these little configurations that you can do in here and make it look exactly the way that you want it to look. Or you can do things like show a shorthand of the distro, show a shorthand of the version of the OS or tons and t basically everything that's on there, you can configure it exactly the way that you want it to look. So for example, you can show how many CPU cores you have, or you can show your CPU temperature, or you can show your GPU temperature and all of this stuff that is actually like, it's really cool. But if you thinking that this is just a waste of CPU resources, then you're absolutely right. There's no practical benefit to running this. It even describes on the GitHub page, that the purpose of this application is for screenshots. So basically it is just an application that's made for Reddit and nothing else. But you know what? Just these little things do make your system look, I guess, a lot more personal, a lot more unique. And I, I don't know, I still like them. Even though it's just a complete waste of system resources and you're gonna be wasting just a half second every time you open up your terminal, I still like it because it's, it's a cool application. So if you still wanna show this information, but you wanna use an application that's a bit quicker than NeoFetch is, I will be doing another video on PFetch, which is basically a very stripped down version of the application. I think it is made by the same developer as well. And basically it's just much, much quicker if you just want that information on there, but you don't want as much extra stuff. Like say you don't want your color theme, for example, because you don't really think that adds anything to your screenshots. Either way, NeoFetch or PFetch, they're both massive wastes of system resources, but 
they look cool either way. So I'll be doing another video on P-Fetch at some point. I'm not sure when, maybe in a couple of days or so. Just keep your eyes open for that one. So as always, if you want to support the developers of this application, I will leave the GitHub in the description below. And I think that there is a link to donate on there, maybe? Maybe on the developers page? I don't know, maybe somewhere. Let's see. Oh yeah, so P-Fetch actually is by the same developer. Is there a link on here to donate? Maybe not. Okay. If you want to submit bug reports or you want to submit extra code to this application, then I will leave the GitHub down below so you guys can help out. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you think NeoFetch is a massive waste of system resources, yeah it is. Let me know either way. Or if you just always run NeoFetch like I do, then hey, that's cool. Let me know what you think about it. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. You'll also maybe see that pfetch video at some point if I decide to make it or if YouTube actually decides to push the update to you, but YouTube can never be trusted to actually do that. So go follow my Twitter and my Macedon and you'll probably get updates there. So I will put a link in the top corner somewhere and that will be a link to the playlist that this video is in so you guys can see some other Linux racing videos that I do. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>